Hi guys, welcome to the Main Branches Maker Lab. So you want to use our 3D printers, right? Well, there's a few things you need to know before you can get started. First is the type of 3D printer that we have, which uh, they all use a manufacturing process called fused filament fabrication, which means that they take a material and melt it through an extruder. Let me show you an example of an extruder. Right here you can see that it has a nozzle and from here it melts your material down in order to create your 3D objects. And the material that we use is called PLA. It's a type of plastic that is cornstarch based, so it has low emissions and is very versatile, so you can use it for a variety of projects. So in order to get started with the 3D printers, first you have to have a 3D file. And these 3D files can be either .stl or .obj 3D objects. How can you get a 3D object like that? Well, you can make one yourself or you can find a pre-made object on websites like Thingiverse. Thingiverse is kind of like an image search but for 3D objects. And from here you can find absolutely anything really. There are many other websites like uh, Thingiverse, but this is the first one that we recommend people go to. Or you can create your own objects by going to either a free program like Tinkercad. As you can see here, I have a cube, and you can bring in different objects to create your own objects. Or if you are more advanced, you can use programs like AutoCAD, Blender, or Maya. After you have found your 3D object, you can download that onto your computer and bring it into your slicing program. A slicing program is what you use to interface with the actual printer. And different brands tend to have different slicing programs. In this case, MakerBot has its own program. For our LooseBot printers, for example, they use a slicing program called Cura that has its own bells and whistles, of course. But every slicing program has universal settings, like I will show you now. Right now, I have a 3D object of a dog. All 3D printing slicing programs have different settings, but ones that are universal to pretty much every printing program is your uh, rafts and supports, which provide scaffolding for your prints so they do not collapse in on themselves. They have infill, which is the amount of material that is inside your print. We also have shells, which are the walls for your prints as well as quality, layer height, which uh, means the quality of your print. Once you are happy with your settings, you can usually do a preview, which will estimate the time your prints will be on our printers for. Uh, the other thing you need really need to know about 3D printing is that it takes a lot of time, and we charge in the Maker Labs by the hour. So if something's going to take one hour, it'll be one dollar. If something's going to be two hours, that's two dollars. And if something's going to be 40 hours long, that's 40 dollars you have to spend. Once you are happy with your settings and the time that your object is going to take, you can go ahead and start your print. So once your 3D print gets going, you're free to monitor it from a safe distance. You never actually want to touch any moving parts on a 3D printer, especially because some parts get extremely hot, and when I say hot, over 200 degrees Celsius, which means that you will definitely get burned. So if you see anything going wrong with your print, you want to reach out to a Maker Lab guide and they can help you sort out any problems that you might have with your print. With all that said, I hope to see you in either the main branch Maker Lab or the Georgetown branch Maker Lab to 3D print. You do not need a library card to 3D print, but if you're going to 3D print at the Georgetown branch, we do ask that you reach out and make an appointment to use the printers there.